For my second player analysis, I have done the defenders. For Barcelona, we did Sergio Busquets, and for Atletico Madrid, we did Diego Godin. Yet again, we're rating them on 0 to 10, 0 being the worst, 10 being the best they could be. Uh, we posi uh, I mean, we rated them on three things, which was positioning, tackling, and heading. For Busquets, the Barcelona centre back, for positioning, we gave him a 9 because in the game he was in the right place constantly throughout the majority of the game. He did not score a perfect 10 because there was occasional points in the match where he moved out of his position to cover other players' tracks. This meant his position was left open to their opposing attackers. <coughs> For tackling, we gave him an 8. Uh, he covered any oncoming attack from Atletico forwards. Every time they went near Busquets, he had them tracked down and tackled them himself or led into a tackle. For heading, we gave him a 6 because he did not use his head, heading skills throughout the game very well, but the level of football he plays, he should be an excellent standard to be able to form successful headers when needed. But for Diego Godin, for his positioning, we gave him a 7, because he got caught out by Vera Messi uh, on more than one occasion. This was because his, his left his position to cover other players as well as himself, but he was also not aware of what was on what was happening in his own position. For heading, he had a, I mean, sorry, for tackling, he got a 6 rating out of 10. This was because he was outclassed again by Messi and Villa, the Barcelona attackers. And every time they attacked Miranda and Godin, uh, Messi and Villa manoeuvred around them easy, so Godin didn't get many tackles in like he should have done. For heading, we gave him a 6 again for his head ability throughout the game. This was because he rarely headed the ball, but at his level of game, he should have successfully headed the ball clearly and efficiently. This is why we only gave him a 6 rating. For the midfields, we did, for Barcelona, we did Xavi, and for Atletico Madrid, we did Thiago. For Xavi, for the midfielders, we assessed them on passing, dribbling, and tackling. For, ta for passing, I mean... We gave uh, Xavi a 9 out of 10 uh, because he passes he passed the ball around the pitch, spreading it to the both wingers, which were to Pedro and Villa. We were making plenty of movement for him to find the pass. Uh, got good passes. He got a, a goal assist, which created um, David Villa's goal and passed it to uh, a Barcelona attacker, which made them give up... Uh, can like manage to get a penalty from that pass. For dribbling, we gave him a nine again because he always kept the ball. He didn't lose it. He just kept it simple with dribbling. When he di when he didn't need to do too much, he just released the ball and pass it. For tackling, we gave him a seven. This was because when he needed to tackle, he successfully did tackle. But sometimes he could have tackled them where he should have just stood them and stuff like that. For Thiago, for Atletico Madrid, for passing we gave him a 5. Uh, <coughs> this wasn't his best performance compared to what he is capable of. Love. After he hit the crossbar in the first few minutes, he didn't really get involved in game most of the, most of the time because Barcelona just kept possession of the ball. Uh, for dribbling... We gave him a 5, and tackling, we gave him a 4. This was just because he couldn't really get close to Barcelona. Whenever he did, they just passed the ball quickly past him. Four. For the attackers, I did David Villa, who plays for Barcelona, and Reyes, who plays for Atletico Madrid. We assessed them on three things, which was passing, dribbling, and speed. For David Villa, we gave him a 9 for passing because whilst he was in the game he uh, he only did a couple of bad passes which gave away possession to Atletico Madrid's attackers dribbling we gave him a 9 again because he most of the players he tried to challenge down the wing he got past successfully speed we gave him a 9 because after he dribbled past them he could outplay outspeed them down the line and get a cross in for Reyes uh, we gave him an 8 he did some occasional good passes but in, in the game, but made the possession turn into Barcelona's favour after he tried to do a pass. For dribbling, 
uh, when he occasionally got the ball, he did something good. But as he had no support, he tried to do mu- do too much to himself, and he occasionally gave the ball to Barcelona. The speed, he got outpaced quite often down the line and got tackled as after they did catch up to him. Overall, David Veer was a better winger, as you can see from the scores above, as he got a 27 and a out of 30, and Reyes got 23 out of 30. In the game, Veer did some good passes into players where they could progress into the attacking move, and his dribbling got and his dribbling got him past the right back loads of times, which ended up in scoring from in the game. Now I'll be moving on to some team analysis. The first one would be uh, identifying possession of the ball in the first 20 minutes. Um, basically, the results were Barcelona had most of the possession. As you can see, it was all mainly in the middle park where they just received the ball and released it quickly. In the first, we did it in the first 20 minutes. Um, there will be out of 100 pieces of data. It will, it will pause every 12 seconds. Whoever had the ball would be put marked down in results. Uh, 30 time, 38 times Atletico Madrid had the ball when we stopped the clock. And it was 62 times with Barcelona. So that means Barcelona just had better midfielders, better passers, and made them keep possession of the ball a lot better. The next one would be... Uh, try the to identify the amount of good passes made and bad passes made by Barcelona in the first 20 minutes. Um, as uh, good passes that Barcelona made in the first 20 minutes were a total of 180. Uh, bad passes were uh, six. Um, no, I mean sorry, tackles were six. Interceptions were 18 and out of play were 10. So as you can see here, they just kept the ball well, didn't need to do any unnecessary passes to their players. So they just always kept possession of the time, making Atletico Madrid run after the ball. Um, uh, for the to identify this next one will be to di- to identify the amount of good dribbles Barcelona had done throughout the game to win and score. Uh, we did it on successful dribbles and unsuccessful dribbles. Uh, for Barcelona, uh, they had 4, 8, 11 successful dribbles and 6 unsuccessful dribbles. As you can see, they didn't really take many players one-on-one. They all just kept it as a team game and passed it thoroughly through the Atletico Madrid's midfield. Um, so... From all that, we've decided that Barcelona were the over better all team as they had more key players, as they had Xavi, who we thought was the main key player, just passing it around, keeping Barcelona in line, making them receive the ball, pass it quickly. Uh, maybe some improvements for Atletico Madrid were when they possibly got the ball, they could maybe try and keep possession a bit more and just pass it over all their players, get their confidence up a bit. But Barcelona just dominated because of experience and they knew what they were doing, just keeping the ball and passing it between them.